Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the sixth part of What If Goku Had Maharagi's Adaptability. Please like the video if you haven't already and subscribe, it's totally free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. There's nothing much else I'd like to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since the jet. Winter time, all the time, oh. yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay. I had cocaine in the school. The Universe 6 fighters stand from surprise and Champa almost can't believe what he's just seen. He knew how strong Frost's race was and thought he would at least make it quite far before he was eliminated, but he was taken out by this Saiyan with a single strike. He looks to Beerus in his deep contemplation and just sees a smile on his face. The following fighter that is up against Goku is Ultima Geta. Even though he possesses exceptional durability, he is taken out in a single hit, just like Frost. Goku is levels above the God of Destruction at this point, so these fighters pose no threat to him. The following fight is quite a bit more interesting, and I feel like Vegeta still has the desire to meet the Universe 6 Saiyans. Therefore, he is left to fight him and still manages to get him to turn Super Saiyan as he did in canon, but then he is eliminated by hit in the same manner as he was in canon. He is stronger in this series, but I don't think he'd be strong enough to take down hit due to his time skip abilities. Goku is placed right back into the battle once this happens, and he seems more intrigued by the battle since he has never seen anything like time skip before. He races toward Hit in his base form and throws a punch only to see Hit now by his side. Even though he does this, Goku manages to use Ultra Instinct in his base form and evades the attack easily. Hit is dumbfounded by his showing of speed since he basically has never seen this before. He continues with these time skip attacks of his but they are all futile. Goku not only is resistant to the strikes if they were to land but his Ultra Instinct means that he basically can't be hit in the first place. Hit frustrated powers up and begins using using his full power. Champa is currently biting his finger as he sees this happen because this is the strongest being he has in his universe. If Hit can't somehow perform exceptionally here, they're toast. He races at Goku then begins advancing toward him from another direction. Goku's body still evades it from the other senses he has to detect the attack and Hit's frustration only rises. Once Hit charges at Goku from ahead of him, tired of his strategies failing, he receives a punch straight to his gut. The punch sounds like an explosion and also destroys the newly formed arena once again. Again, nearly killing Hit. Whis watches this fight with caution because it seems that Goku doesn't have the control over his power that he would like him to have. It's clear that the Saiyan has to remain under his surveillance for the short time that remains where Goku is weaker than him. The sky really is the limit with you Saiyan, isn't it? Whis thinks, chuckling to himself. So the tournament of destroyers is over and the fighters return to training under Whis. Goku has basically not been able to spar anyone and is perfecting the use of Ultra Instinct and his fighting techniques on his own. He is well on his way to surpassing Whis and that full power his hits can hurt the angel if he is taken off guard. It'll only be a spar before he surpasses the angel and as he is meditating, future Trunks arrives on earth once again. This time his wounds are grave and he's covered in blood from himself and Mai. Goten, who is back on Earth, manages to heal Trunks by fetching a Sensu Bean, but then, once Goku arrives on the planet once again, he leaps at him. He doesn't punch him, but instead grabs his shirt and attempts to push him around. He grits his teeth with serious force, and Goku can see the pure rage in his eyes, but is totally confused. Are you okay, Trunks, he asks, with his arms up. Then, the group starts to converse, and they talk about what happened in his timeline. Goku Black, he's killed all the gods and has nearly massacred all life in the surrounding area to Earth. He toys with me because he knows that he could kill me and everyone that I loved, but he kept me alive for the fun of it. Trunks can't help but clench his fist until it intensely vibrates. Goku Black, like me, Goku asks. Upon hearing this, Beerus and Whis look very concerned themselves. Did you say this being was Goku, Beerus asks. Trunks is taken aback by his sudden concern since these gods seemed quite nonchalant just seconds prior. Yes, well, it isn't his mind. I think another person took over or reanimated his body in some way. He's way eviler than I ever remembered Goku being, Trunks states. I'd like to meet this being. I'll fight him, Goku states. Whis steps ahead of him and places his staff in front of him to stop him. No, you shouldn't, Whis explains. I'm the only person that can take him down, I can fight fire with fire, Whis, Goku pleads. Whis contemplates it and he knows that he's right. If Whis fights him, he'll just adapt to his speed and become overwhelmingly powerful. This even makes him think of summoning the Grand Priest because this threat is so unbelievably dangerous. Initially, he chooses not to do so, but he knows that Beerus and Whis absolutely must be there. 
After he explains what has taken place, they decide that they need to erase the current Zamasu. Beerus and Whis head there to do what they need to do, and Beerus uses his Hakai before Zamasu can do anything to Gowasu or become Goku Black. Next, they decide to head to the future timeline and Goku arrives. I sent him, he's very strong, I can tell you that, Goku says, looking off in the direction of Goku Black. In seconds, the dark figure shows himself in the skies before slowly closing in on the group of warriors. Vegeta can't help but feel scared. This being could be as strong as Goku and even if he hates to admit it, he cannot contest with the Saiyan's power. He really is as strong as father, Gohan says, looking up into the sky. Goku ascends to face the warrior and just takes the time to assess it. You really did take my body, he states with a chuckle. Goku Black doesn't even reply and rushes in to attack him. Goku easily evades his incoming attack before throwing a punch into his gut. The shockwave destroys numerous buildings below them and causes the spectating Saiyans to brace for the shockwave's impact. Goku Black smirks upon taking this attack. Since his body is resistant to those strikes, he throws a punch at Goku's face but he evades the attack once again with the use of Ultra Instinct. The two warriors exchange blows for a time but it does nothing to either of them. However, Goku is surprised that Goku Black is willing to stay in just his base form. Why not transform? You're not even using Ultra Instinct, Goku states. I don't need to use any mortal transformation to defeat you all, Goku Black roars, throwing a wild swing that Goku evades. But you had to use the body of one to do your bidding. You couldn't have destroyed all mortals without a mortal's power, Goku says back. Goku then shuts his eyes and as he opens them, he enters the graceful, majestic form of Super Saiyan God. His fiery aura roars around his body and the red, orange and gold energy mix around beautifully. He races back toward Goku Black and throws a punch that he simply cannot take. This punch of his makes him almost cough out blood before he is sent flying through various buildings. Goku races after him in flight and throws various punches that beat down Goku Black even further. In his advance, Goku ascends into Super Saiyan Blue then stacks on Kaioken to his form. Kaioken times 100, he shouts, erupting in a massive blue aura encased in a roaring red aura from his Kaioken. Goku Black can't even track his incredibly swift movements, then he takes a punch to his stomach that rattles him completely. The two fighters come to a stop and Goku Black coughs blood as he drops to a knee, but his very own Dharma Chakra wheel is spinning. Goku knows exactly what will happen as he heals, becoming even more resistant to his attacks. Goku Black looks more than enraged from being inferior to a mortal. He roars and enters base Super Saiyan earlier than he did in canon. His power increases by vast amounts and he charges back at Goku with immense speed, however Goku evades with the use of Ultra Instinct in his new form. Goku Black charges right in with another punch and aims for his head, but Goku catches his punch and shuts his attack down completely. Goku's interest in the battle at hand has faded and he knows what will happen if he keeps things going on for too long. His opponent will adapt, just like himself, and become a threat that he doesn't want to deal with. However, if he is just like himself, he should be resistant to all his attacks. The only reason he's been doing damage is because he seems to be way stronger than him since he can't use all his body's power. The situation starts to dawn on him and it really won't be easy to try and get rid of this guy with just brute force. Goku then teleports back to the group of spectating fighters, now in his base form. If he's like me, he should be resistant to almost every attack I throw at him. I don't think it'll be easy for me to take him down, Goku states. Really? You were laying him out? Why did you not just land the finishing move, future Trunks asks. It's not that simple, Trunks. My father can adapt to pretty much any situation you put him in, and I think that power is linked to that wheel that floats over his back. If Goku Black possesses his body and that wheel too, he should have that power as well, Gohan explains. The fighters are in quite the predicament, and Goku Black raises to face them. I can finally feel my mind becoming accustomed with this body of yours, Goku. It'll only be a matter of time before you all perish, Goku Black roars, beginning his transformation. Soon enough, his roar sounds demonic and beast-like, which reminds Goku of his first Ultra Instinct transformation. Seconds later, the Pseudo Saiyan enters Ultra Instinct Omen, which prompts Goku to do the same. Retreat now, he calls out to his comrades, before blocking a punch from Goku Black. Just the shockwave from this punch forces the other fighters away, then Goku tries to throw a swift, flick-like jab only to see Goku Black's body evade it also. As the two fighters exchange these blows, they only grow stronger. Their bodies adapt to each other's Ultra Instinct to make their attacks not only faster but more forceful. Their power level should be skyrocketing. Goku is using Goku Black to make himself stronger, but he's doing the same to him, Vegeta realises, watching the fight continue. Goku, upon continuing this battle, realises that he won't be doing much against Goku Black like this. In order to defeat him, they need to find the loophole to his power or a unique, fast-acting method to eliminate him. Goku arrives back around the other fighters with his power heavily suppressed. You must leave now. I need to find a way to kill him in the present, Goku states. Fine, Mai and I will stay. I have a hiding place that we 
we can stay in, Trunks explains. The present timeline Saiyans eventually depart and then Trunks and Mai have a place to hide in so that they aren't targeted by Goku Black. Goku Black examines his surroundings restlessly, an Ultra Instinct Omen, but he can't find a single person. There's mortals, he says to himself, with contempt. Goku returns to the present timeline and they meet up with Beerus and Whis shortly after. So what happened, Beerus asks. Nothing, nothing at all. Goku Black is too strong for me to just defeat, Goku says. Beerus then hisses like a cat in annoyance from hearing this statement. Beerus, I need you to teach me Hakai, Goku replies. During this time, the other Saiyans can do nothing but wait patiently for Goku to find something to do in this situation. They are simply too weak and there isn't much that they can do at this point. Goku and Beerus enter the hyperbolic time chamber immediately and begin training. Goku goes through the motions very quickly, as usual, and learns the Hakai in mere days. He learns it in slightly less time than Ultra Instinct and spends more time mastering the attack. Goku doesn't really spend time learning the whole mentality behind destruction because he doesn't exactly want to. What he needs is a quick, deadly attack to take out Goku Black and after learning the attack and pushing his body to the limits, he thinks he's ready. The Saiyans are ready to depart and they can tell that Goku is stronger just from his demeanour. I think Goku might be stronger than me now, Beerus, we states. This makes Beerus incredibly surprised. A mortal surpassing an angel has never happened before in the histories of every universe that exists and has ever existed. Really, are you sure you're not just jumping to conclusions, Beerus asks. No, the only person left for him to surpass is the Grand Priest. I think this power has been placed in the right hands nonetheless. He's a saint, but he's of pure heart. He tries his best to save others, even when there's nothing in it for himself. We should be lucky it was Goku and not someone like Frieza, we says, making Beerus chuckle from his last statement. Sure, Beerus replies, watching the Saiyans depart for the future. Goku arrives back in the past timeline and teleports out of the time machine before it even opens. So, you've returned, Goku Black asks, facing him. Yes, I've returned to defeat you. You have my powers, but you've overestimated its power. If a unique attack is quick enough to kill me, I lose, Goku explains. Why reveal such a thing? You've just given yourself a death wish, Goku Black shouts, charging forward to try and stab his key scythe into his chest. From his sheer speed and power, he does stab into Goku's chest, making making him snarl in pain but nothing else happens. Goku Black slowly removes his glowing palm to see the wound seal up right away. I've been stabbed like that on numerous occasions. My body won't die from that attack any longer. You shouldn't die from that either, Goku says, making Goku Black arrogantly smile. However, I've never been hit with this attack before and you haven't either. This attack kills immediately, Goku says, raising his palm. He enters his mastered Ultra Instinct form and Goku Black reflexively cowls away upon feeling the power from this form. His transformation causes adverse weather conditions around him due to the sheer amount of energy coming from him. Lightning strikes down all around them and destroys buildings. Harsh gusts of wind blow over their bodies and the purple ball of energy grows in his palm. Hakai, he roars, as his eyes glow purple. The blast is hurled toward Goku Black and he rashly catches the ball, only to see it shred through his arms. It doesn't feel painful, but his arms just disappear basically. The ball lands on his chest and a large explosion is given off. Once the white light dies down, nothing is left of Goku Black, not even his clothing. Future Trunks cannot thank Goku enough for his achievement, and as Amasu reveals himself, Goku is able to make quick work of him and erase him with the use of Akai once again. The present day Saiyans return to their timeline and Future Trunks waves them off, happy to stay in his own timeline. There are no threats left and now they can work to build the world up with its survivors once again. In a totally different realm, Whis kneels before the Grand Priest and Zeno along with Beerus. For what reason did you summon me father, Whis asks, looking down. A mortal within your universe now possesses extraordinary power. You have played a good role in vetting him along his growth, but Zeno would like to meet him at this instant. If he is deemed as a threat, Zeno will be obligated to erase him, the Grand Prix states. Whis looks incredibly nervous because there aren't many reasons you could give to say that Goku isn't a threat at this point. Yes, father, he states, before Whis and Beerus then depart to make their way back to Universe 7. So that will conclude the sixth part of What If Goku Had Maharaga's adaptability. Please tell me something you liked about this video or something that I should improve on for the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.